Business on Purpose Podcast. So we're in the conference room talking about hiring, bring on a new person. One of the key leaders in this business was was really frustrated because, frankly, the uh, the sales numbers that were being put out, the quotas that were being put out, uh, they, it was requiring a lot of work in order to get proposals out. And quite frankly, it was more work than the team that they had had prepared. And so what this key leader was talking to the owner about was, hey, we need more people. But what the owner was telling to the, to the key leader was, I don't know that I want to bring more people on until we know that we're actually and can actually get the work that we're putting proposals out for. So chicken or the egg, right? We're trying to figure that out. Hey, it's Scott Beebe with the Business on Purpose podcast. Time to be liberated from the chaos of hiring or not hiring, of working in your business. And so this was a real life situation, literally just happened 37 minutes ago. And I'm coming out of this, I wanted to be able to share where we're at. I wanna give you this from the perspective of the owner, and I also wanna give you this from the perspective of the key leader. So the key leader is thinking, I need more people. I need more people because you're asking me to do not only leadership functions, but you're also asking me to do tactical functions, putting together proposals, getting pricing, Uh, timeline schedules, all those sorts of things. So what am I to do? Well, from the owner's perspective, they're thinking that's adding more overhead to and and essentially taking away from the bottom line, which in this case is not just the owner's bottom line, but it's also bonus incentives. So it's actually going to impact the very person who's asking for the additional team members because it'll go against their bonus uh, on the bottom line. Now, that doesn't take into account at all the investment and the uh, actual growth in business that we assume, right? And so we, I, I wanna be very open and candid about those things. So with that being said, here's what we have to look at. And this is with both the owner and the key leader in the room, we were able to have this discussion, is when you're talking about onboarding, when you're talking about hiring, the very first thing you've got to be able to uncover is you've gotta identify a gap in the market or a gap in your business. And by identifying that gap, What you're able to say is, okay, now we can move forward to figure out if we can fill that gap. So here's the gap. In this case, the gap is we need more people to help get more proposals out the door to try and land more business to actually meet the numbers that we've projected out for this coming year. So the gap is there. This number of people cannot handle the number of proposals that are needed. Okay. So then we've got to look a couple of different ways. Number one is this group of people being the most efficient. And if they're not being the most efficient, then we start there. If they are increased in their efficiencies, then what we have to do is we have to go to the next step and start to figure out the budget. And so in figuring out the budget, we're asking ourselves, do we have the funds to be able to bring a new team member in, excuse me, and what's that going to do to the budget? How's it going to impact the budget? And so you start to run those numbers. And so you might say, well, how would I ever know based on projected revenue? Well, in this particular case, you want to look back at things like what they call in the industry kill rate, the number of proposals we send out compared to the actual work that we get out of that number of proposals. It might be 20% or 40% or 60%, what they call a close rate. Well, if you're not tracking that right away, it tells you in the business, we need to start tracking that. We need to start, and it's an easy number to track. You may not have tracked it in the past, but you can do it starting now moving forward and tracking, hey, we're gonna put this, uh, these things down on paper. Here are the number of proposals or whatever bids we're sending out, and here are the number of jobs that we're actually landing or the number of clients that we're actually on taking, customers that we're onboarding. So you start to track those numbers and that'll get your close rate. So you can assume for every, you know, 10 proposals we put out, we get two that turn into customers. That's a 20% close rate. If you run that 20%, then you start to understand how many proposals you need to send out, how many proposals can each person handle. That tells you what that is. And then you start to put numbers to the actual person. And so running those numbers, projections, proposals to close, uh, actual salary, we typically want to see that a new team member is going to generate three to four times their Uh, their annual income, we want to see that they're going to generate three to four times that amount in what we call real revenue. So take the revenue minus cost of goods out. And somewhere in that, it's just a kind of a general rule of thumb. And when you have that in play, now what you can do is start to understand if we bring on a new person for, let me just use a round number, $50,000 a year, 
they're gonna have to generate around $200,000 a year of real revenue for the company in order to not only cover their overhead, but to meet profitability numbers. And obviously that depends on your business. But in doing that, now we can make a decision whether or not hiring is the right thing. You start using the numbers to help make these decisions. And when you can do that, it brings the business to a completely different level and it brings decision-making to much greater clarity. So there you go, one little element that you can do to start helping liberate not only you, but also your owner from the chaos of working in the business. Mybusinessonpurpose.com forward slash vision. Start there and we'll see you next time right here on the Business on Purpose podcast.